and probably like everybody's initial entrepreneurial endeavor is where you learn the game because as much as people want to think that you can learn entrepreneurship through classes or schooling or any of that like it's just not realistic you know you have to be in it I like to move fast. Sometimes it's a disadvantage for me because going fast, I don't think you can ever create perfect work. I think perfect work takes time. And I think perfect work can also become a hindrance to growth and scalability because you're trying to be so perfect that you're missing opportunities um, that's coming at you, right? So I've kind of built my brand, my business model around putting out a, a quality product, but not so quality to where it slows me down from taking advantage of opportunities as they present themselves. And um, that, that idea, that concept, that model is funny, actually came from me working at the barbershop. So as a barber, you you know you have to do fades you have to do tapers and if you know anything about working in a black barbershop like black men are incredibly particular about their haircuts right like you want the line up tight you want the blend good like you know so there's a, a sweet spot when it comes to how perfect does this fade have to be versus what can i get away with so that i can get to the next customer so. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, what was the basis of you wanting to build the book? Because from barbershop to marketing to clothing to podcasts to right. social media and so and right. down the book, how does that mindset now translate into you creating the book? So, I, I think with books, there's still a very traditional. Um, there's a very traditional perspective of the general consumer as far as what it means when you actually have authored a book. Like, I think it completely changes someone's opinion or perspective of who you are and whether they want to trust you if you've completed a book process. It's kind of similar to me, it's similar to, you know, having a four-year degree, having a master's, having a bachelor's, a doctor's. If you have a degree, people don't really care about what the degree is. They care more about the idea that you had enough discipline to get good grades, be successful year after year, um, have enough discipline to stay with the process of completing whatever degree you have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think your mindset too the way you're wired, I've noticed like the first one to six conversations, but then after the 10th conversation, you approached it as if it was a brand activation. Yeah, yeah. As if it was an event. Yeah. So what was the, the driving point for you where you said, okay, after this conversation, like this feels like I'm out, you know, having mics in front of me talking. To right. You, you know what? I think that's, that was me. That was me turning into a marketer. Like, cause I'm a marketer at heart. And so I just understand like the framework for if I decide to use this content later, how it needs to be framed so that people respond to it the way that I want them to respond to it. Um, and so I think that was more why I started to kind of position it the way I did. But even still, as soon as I finished the intro and as soon as um, the conversation started, like all of that went away and it turned into like a very candid um, explore, exploration, if you will, of 
that person's life and story and what led them to that moment of us having a conversation, what challenges they faced in you know, creating their business or um, you know, the parts of their story that they feel other people could learn from. You know, cause that was another big thing. Like I wanted to pull out as many nuggets and, and jewels that other people could benefit from as well, you know, so that potentially we could do some type of compilation like this and we can say, and the, it didn't start off with like a plan for a book or anything, right. but I knew after I heard so many of these people pointing to the same type of uh, principles over and over and over again. Like everybody was saying the same things, you know? So now it's like, you know, you got young, aspiring, new entrepreneurs looking for the blueprint to getting their business off the ground. And these multimillionaires and extremely successful individuals, they're literally giving us the tools and nobody wants to read it. And like, now I was just having a conversation with Lo coming here we're in an environment where people don't even want free no more. Like they don't respond to free. It's like, I can give away every secret that I have to making six figures over the course of the next 60 days in every single post and people will skim over it and not blink twice. Then you might have one or two that might be like, man, this is really good information. But then I take that information I put in a book and I sell it for $29.99. And now all of a sudden, it's the greatest advice ever. Yeah. And you're literally going to read everything that I've been posting about. Right. Yeah. It's, and it sounds like this is where things were going anyway. Because mm -hmm. in paying attention to your post, like I would see you posting like, this is what's going on in my life at this moment. Yeah. I'm not sure what's going on in terms of social media, but this is how I can add value. Right. Text my number. Right. Right. Like right. I've, I've been seeing that over the past you watch the progression. One, three you know, months. Yep. So it, it, this seems as if it was a seamless transition. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to be an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're a new entrepreneur, I keep looking at her because she's like on this journey now. And um, <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur, the biggest, the biggest piece of advice is like, you have to have multiple plans. Like you can't put all of your chips in one single basket, you know? So like, and, and, and also it's like, if you can find ways to make, generate revenue through other things, that's kind of, you know, not necessarily, necessarily the same as your main thing, then it just provides like a comfort factor. You know, it's just like, you know, it's, it's stressful trying to figure out how you're gonna make money every single day as an entrepreneur. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching Bill. Season three, episode one. This first episode was taking you from the beginning of my book journey all the way through the entire process. I met with Andre Ellington, who is an incredible writer from Detroit. And our goal is to really dig deep into the story to make sure you get as much out of the process as we possibly can. So I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. We want you here with us every single week so that we can make sure that you continue to build your brand as best as you possibly can. All right, it's your boy Robert Corbin.